Welcome to Pop Turnitin, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, a.k.a. PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turd Podcast. This is the podcast where we have digital discussions, the worlds of pop culture, social media, sports, nostalgia. 25 years ago, a film called The Sandlot came into our lives. And with that said, I have a very special guest. Sir, can I have you introduce yourself to our viewers? What's up, everybody? It's uh, Victor Demadia, uh, Timmy Timmons from The Sandlot. Timmy Timmons. Vic, welcome to Pop Turd, man. Hey, thank you. So, 25 years, cast got together for um, a reunion? Yep. We, uh, it was uh, eight of us, everyone except for Benny. Mm-hmm. And uh, as well as uh, David, David Evans, who was the, the writer and director. He was also the narrator. Mm-hmm. And uh, we saw uh, Art LaFleur, who played the babe, the ghost of the babe. He, he showed up for a little bit. Uh, so it was cool. We got to see everybody. It was awesome. Really, really cool. What was kind of, I mean, it was 25 years ago, <laughs> uh-huh. but, uh, what was kind of, um, I mean, it, it's interesting to hear cause you know, you all were really young. I'm sure for most of you, it was, it was like, was it your first film? Like most of you? Uh, actually I think almost all of us had done stuff before that. Okay. I, had done, I had done actually a lot of stuff before that. Okay. Uh, I started acting when I was like six or seven years old uh so i played dennis the menace in in one of the many uh dennis the menace films um i was on um just growing pains and family ties and married with children uh i did uh i was in radio flyer which was actually uh an, another david evans yeah he also he, directed he, that yeah yeah well he actually wrote it okay and, um dick donner directed it lethal weapon superman uh wow. Richard Donner, he directed it cool so did you just get i mean i mean you, you were so you were six years old but what kind of like what were you drawn to in terms of acting like what made you kind of want to do it well you know at the time uh i mean we we were living in in la um and we just had friends that were kind of in the business family friends my parents did and they were just like, oh, he's a cute kid. Let's uh, set him up. You know, let's get him an agent and see what happens. And sure enough, I started booking things. I mean, I think the line, uh, you know, between being a good actor or a bad actor when you're at that age is like, can you remember words? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there wasn't really, I don't think there was really a whole lot to it. I mean, I did all the acting classes and I did all that kind of stuff. But I, I think the biggest advantage that I had was that I could just remember lines yeah so. no i mean it, it, it's one of those things where um it's um it, it's unbelievable you even look at you know um young actors child actors you look at like stranger things and those kids that are on uh-huh. the show right now and they're those always are great they're amazing and they're in the public eye all the time so yeah like for for a, like a while the sandlot kids yourself patrick red uh, um you guys were in the public eye a lot how was kind uh-huh. of that aspect of it where you know maybe you know 25 years down the road the reunion but like you know when you did it and then like two three years after that you walk around the street i'm sure people would recognize you it was yeah. was it kind of hard to maybe not kind of fall into that because a lot of you were doing other things too right but like everyone's probably going to know you from the sandlot right so how um, how was how was that adapting to that basically that whole kind of wave of sandlot popularity i mean it was really cool um i i think we all actually kind of enjoyed it i mean the biggest i think the, the weirdest thing was going back to school mm-hmm. after the movie came out because you know we, we all we made the movie over the summer and then we went back to school and then it wasn't until the following spring or you know it was april the next april that the movie actually came out so we had that whole year of just kind of going back and being normal and being back in school and then the movie came out and just the reaction after that of going back to school and and uh just seeing uh, how everyone it kind of treated you differently it was really weird uh, but it was cool. I mean, we—I I think we all loved it. You know, it was—it was a lot of fun. Um, I saw a, 
um, an interview with the whole cast, and I think it was at the Angels game, so it's a similar question I'd love to ask uh-huh. you. But uh, the impact on baseball, the movie's had a big impact on baseball. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit about that. Talk a little bit about, you know, were, were any of you um, playing baseball before you got the role? Like, was that kind of maybe like a prerequisite that you have to do research? Talk about the baseball connection to the Sandlot. Uh, yeah, I mean, that was definitely, I, I think, you know, in the initial interviews, it was just kind of like a question, can can you play baseball? And of course, you say yes to whatever, <laughs> you know, you say, yeah, I can do all that stuff. Um, and once we actually got cast, though, they, they brought us out to a baseball field and made sure that we could actually catch and throw and hit the ball and all that stuff. And then from there, once we were, once they had the cast in place, we did like a little kind of boot camp thing for two or three weeks, uh, actually at the Sportsman's Lodge in Studio City. Um, we would we would spend the first part of the day rehearsing and and just you know running through scenes and stuff, and then like in the afternoon we would break for lunch, and then after lunch we would go to a baseball field nearby and we would just play baseball the rest of the day and they had a coach that came and and coached us up and you know the idea was to make it look like we a group of guys that had been playing together their whole life absolutely there's a lot of iconic lines in the sandlot but it's funny Uh because like my mom my whole family loved the movie my my mom's favorite scene involves you the oh, I, really? I blame myself for the yeah. vacuum that that's like her favorite scene she loves that scene great that's my I, favorite scene too <laughs> <laughs> oh not the oh man he's a deep shit what about that uh, one deep, yeah, that was, what do your what do your parents think about that when they saw that did that ever come up and joke around that like you swore as a as a child in a movie you no know, it really didn't i mean <laughs> Like they they just kind of let it go. I mean, I remember my parents actually really enjoying the script. But, you know, when we read it the first time before we started shooting, and they, uh, you know, none of us had ever really had any kind of a sense when we were making it of yeah. what it was going to turn into. But I distinctly remember my dad reading the script with me uh, before we started filming, and my dad was like, "This is going to be really good. This is a really good script." That's so, all, that's no, awesome. he didn't have any issues with me saying shit. Uh, I actually say the F word in, in one of the scenes, and uh, they cut it out because it, w- it would have bumped up the rating. <laughs> that, yeah, the rating system, man. I could, I could do a whole podcast about the rating system of movies. Uh-huh. <laughs> but uh, um, another thing, too, is, no, there's just like – there it. There's like um, a chirp, like I use the term chirp, like but like the cast, like all the kids, they bug each other. You know what I mean? Throughout the uh-huh. whole movie, that's that's kind of what it is. And I think a lot of people, you know, growing up in the fifties or sixties, you know, could, like we're, we're looking at this, we're look, we're watching the movie, and we're saying, wow, you know, I remember, you know, going to the baseball diamond with with my friends doing uh-huh. that. Do you think the movie was also made to kind of pay homage to those? those days you know just hanging out with your friends and just having a good time and you know uh those relationships uh-huh. that were establishing what do, what do you think about that yeah definitely i mean um i think that's a big part of why it's kind of sustained all these years is that it's a timeless kind of a thing uh you know the movie came out in the 90s but it's set in 1962 Mm -hmm. and i think that in just the sort of the colors that they use the way that they shot it it really creates almost like this dream world even though it's based in reality um this kind of almost like a fantasy world and so it makes it it takes it out of time and uh david evans the the writer talks about um you know kind of having the the idea of it just being this sort of endless game that goes on forever you know we didn't keep score or or any of that kind of stuff we would just go out and play every day and it was almost like we would pick right back up where we left off the day before and it was just this game that went on forever and ever no for for sure and uh you know nostalgia is a powerful thing and i think social media is able to kind of um i mean Nostalgia and, and social media go hand in hand. There are mo- like there are movies and there are shows that live forever because of social media. Uh-huh. Sandlot being one of them. So my my question to you is, um, did you ever think you know um, 
when you were making the movie that it was it was gonna have such an impact like maybe not right away you know you're you're okay you're making the movie it got popular but mm-hmm. 10 years ago victor you know were you like wow look, looking back and saying wow this movie was very popular and now social media is kind of maybe not 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 necessarily never left but like kind of bringing it back and people mm-hmm. are kind of seeing the memes out there of ham you're killing yeah. your smalls you know um social media had a big impact in my opinion on the sandlot yeah for sure um i mean you know like i said before I, when we were making it you know i think we were all just happy to be hanging out and playing baseball and making a movie and uh, so we didn't really think about 25 years later what was going to happen um and then even when right when the movie first came out it was you know it was like it it, it was successful but it wasn't like some huge box office you know blockbuster um and even for the years after that i don't think it was really until 15 or 20 years later i mean when i first realized the impact of it i think was like probably five years ago when i when we did some stuff for the 20th anniversary Mm -hmm. and we just saw the the outpouring of of love that we got from people i mean it was just so humbling um to realize that 20 years later people are still watching the movie they're they're now they grew up on it and now they have kids and they're showing their kids um and just keeping it going um you know we would have 10 15 thousand people showing up at these like events that we would do and it was just really incredible and i think that's when i realized the impact that it's had on on people's lives it's it's a really cool feeling it's funny because I had um, Zach Ward, who was in uh, a Christmas story on the show, uh-huh. and uh, s- same thing, you know, like a movie from like uh, over like 20, 25 years ago, and that has such a like the Sandlot, you know, um, such a nostalgic feeling, and people remember it. But right. he kind of he kind of says, you know, at Christmas time, I love talking about it, and then. It's just like I need a break from it. Do you ever? Because it's like it's baseball season now, right? right? It's summer. Do you ever get sick and tired of talking about the sad lot in the summer? Um, well, you know, it's it, it's actually for some weird reason become like a year round thing. Um, and a lot of people, it's part of their Christmas rotation watching the sandlot um so i don't know how it found its way into there but but no i mean i end up talking about it year round uh, but i don't i really don't um i really don't get tired of it it's actually like really cool like i said it's it's really humbling and and um it's just such a cool feeling to know that people feel that connected to you that you're like a part of their lives part of their childhood um so i'm always happy to talk about it no for sure i mean you want to be you want to as like a storyteller and artist, you want to make something that people are going to talk about. I mean, that's the point yeah. of it, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, in the interviews, you know, you talk, um, you and the cast talk. It's great to, it was great to, you know, get um, get all together and, and spend uh-huh. some time together. Did you keep in touch with some of the cast like before their reunions as well? Yeah, yeah. We actually a lot of us talk. Uh, we have a we have like a secret uh, group text chain. <laughs> uh, that we all that we're all part of, and we'll send stuff back and forth through there. It's pretty funny. I hope it has like a, a I get the name of the thread is like something from the movie. Like I hope it's called like Hercules or like. It's I I'm, I don't want to share uh, any details, too many details about it, but it's pretty amazing. Some of the stuff that we pass back and forth in there, it's pretty great. Um, and before we went on air too, you know, you say you're still acting, you're still uh, involved in in, uh-huh. in film, um, and you also mentioned, you know, that your other um, co-stars in the Sandlot, some of them are um, involved with film. But right. have have you ever like talked about for the ones that are still involved with film? Because I know some of them aren't doing it anymore; like, they're not acting anymore. But have right. any of you like thought about like getting together for another project? Like, has that ever has that ever been talked about? Uh, there's. There's been talk actually recently about maybe some kind of a Sandlot reboot with the original cast mm. um, where maybe we would be like, you know, we would have kids of our own that are playing baseball together now or something like that. So there's definitely been talk about it. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. There might. Be I wasn't something. even saying Sandlot, but, you know, like, because you guys like oh, I would grew up to together. Those guys yeah, that, that's back, what I meant. Really. Yeah, absolutely. I well, mean, we just fall right back in when, when all of us are together. It's like we're 12 years old again. Like, we're just instantly fall back in. Those guys are my brothers. So I love all those guys. No, that's great to see. You know, so many of these sports movies, like The Sad Lot, Mighty Ducks. Um, I used to love a... Uh, 
uh, soccer movie, The Big Green. The Big Patrick Green, Renna, yeah. You know, so Pat is in that. Pat Renna and, and Chauncey, I think, is in it as well. Yeah, Lance and Ham. It's true. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, what What, in your opinion, makes a good like you were mentioning before that you know you and your wife are watching shows on Netflix? Um, uh-huh. What What, in your opinion, makes a good like family? oriented movie or show like what do you like what do you look i mean there's a lot of elements but what do you like, look for specifically victor when you're watching a show like what captures your attention i mean it's 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 a tough thing to put your finger on you know um i mean i think even like with the sandlot it's like it was just all these kind of happy accidents you know people call it the movie gods or whatever you want to say but you know, sometimes everything just comes together perfectly and you get this mix of, you know, nostalgia. But, you know, you also have to have a good cast that's believable, that really seems like, you know, they're friends. Um, you got to have that, that good story that goes along with it. But also just, you know, the look of the film and the music and the just, I mean, it's, it's hard to pin down really. But mm-hmm. you just, that's why I think you just kind of, get the best people around you who try to work with the best people that you can and you just hope that everything comes together the way it does um i mean i know personally my when i look for things that i'm watching my tastes are all over the board you know and Mm -hmm. it's tough and it's like this nebulous thing man it's really it really is hard to pin down like what makes a good movie or a good show it's just this combination of of luck and hard work because there's so much stuff out there right now, and you have to like now, that's, you have that's to, you have to choose, problem, like, right? Yeah, every other day. I mean, you got new shows and movies coming out on all this different streaming uh, services and all that kind of stuff. So it's like it's it, it you know in one way there's a lot of really great stuff being made, but then on the other hand, it's it's a lot to weed through. You got to really do your work to find the good stuff. No, for sure, for sure. Well. Victor, we'll wrap up. But like, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, Absolutely, man. Uh, you know, I'm actually doing a podcast of my own now as well. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, for about a year now, me, me and a buddy have been doing a podcast. It's called uh, Vic in a Box. Oh, that's a good name. <laughs> thank you. That's a really uh, good name. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, we. Uh, you should check it out. Um, over the summer, I'm going to have all the guys from the show on. Uh, or Great. From, on the movie, rather. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was on uh, a couple of months ago, but uh, yeah, we'll have, you know, Squance and Ham and my little brother Tommy and, uh, you know, everybody, everybody from the from the movie, uh, I think with the exception of Benny at this point is is uh, locked down to do the show over the summer. Uh, is there anything else? Good? You, you read my mind. Like, I was going to ask you if you wanted to plug anything. And so that would, that's good, it. Good job. I mean, good job. You know, <laughs> to be honest, the rest of the, the next three or four months of my life are, are going to be kind of taken up by the Sandlot. Uh, we've been, we're doing this big 25th anniversary tour uh, all over the country. We'll be doing uh, MLB stadiums. Are and, you coming to uh, Can- Are you coming to Canada? I don't know. I would hmm. love to. Uh, we don't have any dates there as of yet, but I would love to go. I'd be happy to come. Okay. So uh, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. We're, and we do, you know, every once in a while we'll do like a comic con or something like that as well. So mm-hmm. Uh, cool. Yeah, we'll be traveling around for the next few months. Cool. So, uh, and where can yeah. people where can people like uh, follow you on social media? Like, what are the handles? And what about the podcast? Like, what what do they need to search to check out your oh, podcast? Okay, so for the podcast, it's it's called Vic in a Box, and you can just search it on. I mean, you know, iTunes, uh, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn Radio, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Anywhere you listen to to podcasts, or you can go on the website VicInABox.com mm-hmm. and di- we'll direct you where you need to go from there. Perfect. And uh, and to, to stay uh, updated on everything Sandlot, uh, you can follow me on Instagram. Uh, it's just my name, Victor Demadia, on Instagram, and I'm on Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff as well. I'm real easy to find. I'm I'm I'm, I'm out there. So uh, yeah, fo- follow me, and I'll keep everybody uh, posted on what's going on and where you can come and uh, come and meet all of us and say hello. Great, and uh, do you, I, I hope you have your vacuum uh, handy. Uh, yeah, right. I'm sorry, I, I had to bring that I don't up. Have, I don't have the vacuum handy, but I've always got that uh, monologue in my back pocket <laughs> when I'm ready to, to take that out. 
Perfect. Well, Vic, uh, absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on Pop Turnative. Yeah, totally, man. Thanks for having me. No it's problem. Been a pleasure. Well, this has been Pop Turnative. Uh, you catch previous episodes of Pop Turnative at YouTube.com for the video um, episodes. Uh, if you don't want to see our faces, you just want to hear us, you can listen to us on iTunes, Spotify, wherever uh, you listen to podcasts. We're there. So That's what uh, I recommend. I look a lot better when it's just my voice. Yeah. <laughs> so you try to pull a fast one. You didn't want you originally. <laughs> <laughs> want to do video. I don't remember that. Thank you for tuning in to Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.